All right, take your songbook, turn to page 191. If you will stand, page 191. We'll sing, In My Heart There Rings a Melody, page 191. I have a song that Jesus gave me. It was sent from heaven above. There never was a sweeter melody. Tis a melody of love. In my heart there rings a melody. There rings a melody with heaven's harmony. In my heart there rings a melody. There rings a melody of love. I love the Christ who died on Calvary, for he washed my sins away. He put within my heart a melody, and I know it's there to stay. In my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody with heaven's harmony. In my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody of love. Twill be my endless theme in glory, with the angels I will sing. Twill be a song with glorious harmony, when the courts of heaven ring. heart there rings a melody there rings a melody with heaven's harmony in my heart there rings a melody there rings a melody of love well, amen i really try to fight uh, in my just heart my mind about being ritualistic and i know you know, some things we do all the time, and it's okay. We do things because they're good things to do, but especially when it comes to the singing. Like, I don't want to just sing because it's what we're supposed to do. I really want to think about the words to the songs, and I love this song, and we have a lot to uh, praise the Lord about, have a song in your heart. That'll be the Christian life, having a melody in your heart. And I love, love gospel music and good gospel music. Listen to it quite a bit through the week. So good song tonight. Thanks for being here. Let's pray and we'll get started. Father, we love you. Thank you so much for today. Been a blessing to be in church today, Lord, especially on this Mother's Day. And we thank you for meeting with us this morning, the many visitors that were here. Thank you for that. Lord, I just pray that you would once again meet with us tonight. May we be drawn closer to you through the preaching of your word and the fellowship. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And you may be seated. All right, well, I want to do this tonight, and we've been doing uh, stories behind the hymns on Sunday night, and so we've got a good uh, hymn tonight that we'll tell you the story about. Uh, if you want to go ahead and turn to that song, you can do so, page 244, page 244, and uh, good old song, Amazing Grace. Here's the story behind Amazing Grace. And um, actually, it kind of goes well because I think I mentioned this last week that this is the week that I chose because I didn't write the exact date down. I think it was close to this week when I was saved as an 11-year-old boy. And uh, obviously, the Holy Spirit working on my heart. I knew who I was. And I knew what my sin had, had done. And where it would take me and so I praise the Lord for my salvation well 30 31 years ago this week so uh, what a blessing all right so uh, here's a story of amazing grace of course you can see written by John Newton there uh, John Newton as a little boy learned of the truth of the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ he learned the story or he learned uh, himself about the grace of God and how it could set him free. John Newton was born in London in the year 1725. 
So this is an old song. 1725 is when he was born. His father was a sea captain. Now think about this. Let all this sink in about this song. His father was a sea captain. His mother was a devout Christian who, realizing that at an, that an illness she had would take her life within a short time, and she taught her son to know the Bible at an early age. When John was seven, his mother died. John went to sea with his father when he was 11, and by the time he was 17, he was in the British Royal Navy on a man-of-war ship. During this time, however, John drifted far from the teachings of his mother. which each, With each passing year, he sank deeper into the pit of sin. First, he was a sailor on a slave ship. Eventually, he was a captain transporting slaves from Africa to ports where they could be sold for the best prices. Finally, one stormy night on a waterlogged ship in 1748, with the main mast broken in two, John Newton came face to face with the God of his childhood Bible learning. Then and there, John was saved from his darkest sins. John's life was changed forever. He abandoned the sea. He settled in Liverpool and married Mary Catlett. Soon, John felt God's call in his life to preach, and preach he did, securing an appointment to the parish church at Olney, England. To add a special touch to his messages, John would close with poetic verses that he would compose. On a Sunday morning in 1779, Pastor Newton closed his heartwarming message with an original poem about God's grace, or as John called it, His amazing grace. That same grace that changed John's life can change yours too if you'll let it. And what an interesting story about John Newton. Lived a life of sin, but he met the Lord and he wrote a song about it. So let's sing that song, page 244. Now you know what inspired the author to write it. Maybe it'll mean a little bit more to you tonight. Let's sing it. Ready? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch. It's good to have you here tonight. Of course, we're uh, recognizing moms today here on Mother's Day. We did that this morning, and uh, we gave out a gift this morning. I want to make sure 
That's available again tonight. Maybe you didn't get that. Uh, let's see. Uh, Ava, can you help me? Can you go to the back in that box and get some of these water bottles? And I wonder if there's somebody that didn't get one this morning, a mom. I know we've got visitors tonight. So, Miss McCrillis, appreciate you and your motherhood. So, we'll get one to you. Anybody else? Miss Nelda, did you all get one? I know you were out in junior church, toddler church. And uh, so, Ava, come and give one to Miss Krista Dawn. She's right here. Then, uh, Brother Roger, why don't you take one home to your wife and tell her Happy Mother's Day from the church? You've got one. There you go. That'd be a blessing. All right, very good. Thank you. There's just one tonight. So thank you, Ava, for your help. I appreciate that. And I had a good, good day today. It was uh, a blessing. We were able to, Mama wanted to go out to eat. Let's do it. We went to Columbia, to Olive Garden, and they said, hour and a half wait. I knew it was going to be busy, and I said, well, that's a little bit longer. I don't know if she's worth an hour and a half wait. I mean, now... Oh, she's worth way longer than that. Or should I say, I've been waiting on her much longer than an hour and a half in our 20 years of marriage. <laughs> Amen. You're not going to throw anything over here, are you? Okay. Um, so anyway, we, we said, well, that's fine. We'll, we'll sign up. We put her name down and phone number so they could text us when it was done. We went out to the parking lot. It's a beautiful afternoon out. Found a nice tree over. We're taking some pictures of the kids. And it wasn't probably 15 minutes my phone went off and said, your table is now ready. We said, praise the Lord, I'll take that. And so we enjoyed a nice uh, nice dinner. Had a great uh, great time together this afternoon, but uh, good to be here. A little bit tired, but glad to be in church tonight. Uh, here's some announcements, and then we'll do scripture verses for the children if you're ready for that. And just a couple of reminders this next week. We will have another vacation Bible school meeting. So next Sunday, if you're interested in helping with decorations, make sure you come with your, your uh, brains engaged. We need lots of good ideas. Of course, the theme is down on the farm, so we're going to decorate on a farm theme this year. It will be a blessing. And then I mentioned next Friday night, not this week, but next Friday night, uh, we'll be taking the young people to St. Louis for a youth meeting at uh, Pastor Brian Andrews Church there in St. Charles. I think it's in St. Charles. And um, I'd like to take a van load if we can. So let me know if you're interested. I don't think there's a cost at all on it. It's just uh, activity time at the church. Of course, preaching. We'll get back super late, probably midnight or so that night. I think it goes from 6 to 10 at his church and get back late. I love, uh, love taking young people to things like this. Look forward to that. And uh, it's good to have the McCrillises with us tonight. And, uh, you know, drove two hours to hear good preaching. You know, you got to do what you got to do. No, I know they came to see Mama. And so, oh, that's the second surprise I've heard of today. Miss Alice got surprised. And it's another surprise. Be good to see y'all are welcome to, uh, to hook up with us Friday night if you want to do that and come to the youth meeting. That'd be a blessing. All right, let's take up, uh, uh, let's do memory verses. So anybody have a verse tonight? Come on up. Just one. Matthew, <clears throat> Matthew 18, 20. Two words. All right, very good. Appreciate that. <clears throat> Uh, we'll mention that we want to <clears throat> begin, start, actually we've already started with some of the projects around church, and we've got the new, uh, uh, new commode in the ladies' restroom, so now we have two uh, of the taller commodes, it'll be a little bit of a blessing, we've got the, uh, Brother Chester installed the uh, food, what's that thing called, disposal in the, in the kitchen, so keep the ladies happy there now you can uh, not have to unclog the sink with all the junk i got that installed we've got half the pews removed out of the old church they're coming back to get the other half and then it's really it's full steam ahead on that building if you want to volunteer some time um, you know if you can paint that's a big project and um, we want to do that before the new carpet's installed obviously and so there's lots of painting to be done and a few other things just let me know and um, 
we're going to schedule a work week, uh, probably the first part of June. Really try to get a lot of things knocked out, all in preparation for our 70th anniversary this fall. So the Lord's been good, blessed us, and excited about these things. So let me know if you're interested in helping uh, with any projects, and we'll have plenty to do. Let's take our song book, and we'll sing one more song tonight. <clears throat> We're going to get ready to get right into the preaching. Let's sing about grace. We'll continue that uh, theme, page 208. Grace greater than our sin. And I feel like the Apostle Paul, many times he said, you know, Christ Jesus came to, into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Sometimes I feel like my sin's great, but grace is greater than that sin. Amen. Let's sing that song. I'll get with you in just a second. 208, here we go. <laughs> Marvelous grace of our loving Lord, grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt. Yonder on Calvary, Thank you for this time of giving tonight. Lord, I think it's very important <clears throat> that we as Christians are in a habit of giving. Lord, you gave your all. We get to give back through our time, through our talents, our treasure, part of that giving. Lord, we ask your blessing upon the offering. Dedicate it to your use. In Jesus' name I pray.
Take your Bibles, if you will, go to Acts chapter 18 tonight. It is good to have the McCrillises here. He was a blessing uh, to me personally last week. Uh, and broke down. Actually, blessing more to my wife and uh, they were in St. Louis coming back and the van broke down and I didn't know he has a big S on his chest, but that's the real Superman right there. I tell you what, he saved the day and appreciate that. Acts chapter 18, if you will, find your place in verse number 24. And uh, that's where we'll be tonight. I forward to teaching this passage of scripture, I think. <clears throat> a good reminder, a good help to us. We'll read verses 24 down through verse number 28, Acts chapter 18. And when you find that, if you would stand tonight as we read the scripture. Acts chapter 14, or 18. Read verse 24 to 28. Follow along, if you will, as I read. The Bible says, And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in the Spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. And when he was disposed to pass into Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him, who, when he was come, helped them much, which had believed through grace. For he mightily convinced the Jews, and that publicly showed by the Scriptures that Jesus was Christ. Uh, this is a really good passage of Scripture about Apollos. He's probably someone that we don't really know a whole lot about and maybe have not heard a lot of teaching about Apollos. But we're going to learn something about Apollos tonight that I'll be, I think will be a good reminder for us and a good help to us as... Um, we, uh, well, to be honest with you, I've really been burdened to focus and preach to the young people on Sunday nights, but to try to be inclusive of everybody with those messages. This will be one that we can all, all use tonight for sure. And uh, we're going to have a word of prayer. I'll have you to be seated, and uh, we have a special song, and I'll preach tonight. Father, thank you so much uh, for the opportunity we have to, to preach your word tonight. Father, I do pray that you'd speak to us. And Lord, I know what you've laid on my heart, I know what is to come. I believe it'd be what you have for us tonight. I pray you'd help us to receive that. Lord, please find the devil from this place that we wouldn't be distracted tonight. We wouldn't be hindered in what you have for us. Help me as I preach, Lord, I need you. Please guide my thoughts, guide my words tonight, I pray. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You may be seated. All right, um, we're going to back up and punt here, all right? That's what we're going to do because uh, this was a surprise to my wife, and she stepped She doesn't even know the song, so uh, it looks like she might have Delaney. So anyway, um, we'll just wait here just a second on that. Let me go ahead and give you an introduction here. Let's talk about Apollos for just a second. And um, Apollos had a lot of great qualities, a lot of great qualities. And obviously we can find from this passage of Scripture that he was used by God. And, and he was used in a great way to, I believe personally, uh, be responsible for many people uh, coming to the saving knowledge of Christ. A lot of good qualities, and we'll look at some of these uh, here in a moment. But one thing about it, and we'll get to this, he had a limited knowledge there were some things that he didn't know, and he overcame that by this. Uh, and Darren, you can go ahead and come on up. 
And, and here's the thing about Apollos. He had a teachable spirit. He had a teachable spirit. So I want to preach a message with, with this title, The Treasure of a Teachable Spirit. What a great attribute to have. And so uh, I apologize. Uh, this is a surprise to my wife uh, from uh, here on Mother's Day. Darren has a song that he wants to sing, he's been working on. And so this will be a blessing, I believe. And I enjoyed the offertory very much. Molding a masterpiece. That was a, was a blessing to me. So, hurry up. The Lord's coming back, son. <clears throat> All right, very good. How can I repay? I wanna. I can only try to save this moment that I'm really thankful for. So many things you've done. I can take this time to tell you. Taught me how to smile and showed me clearly right from wrong. I'd like to take this time to tell you Happy Mother's Day, I love you, Mom. I know at times you sacrificed and I know I made you cry, but I hope that you can see my heart. Love for you inside. Tell me how can I repay? I wanna. I can only try to save this moment that I'm really thankful for the many things you've done. I'd like to take time to tell you Happy Mother's Day. I love you. This time to tell you Happy Mother's Day. I love you. All right, it's a blessing, amen. And I was able to talk to my mom this afternoon. Well, actually, I didn't get a hold of her, and we sent a text message and we responded, but uh, moms are such a blessing. Acts chapter 18, I want to draw our attention to Apollos, and as I said a moment ago, Apollos had a lot of great qualities in his life. We can see some of these listed out here, or really kind of just read between the lines and understanding what was written here. Notice, if you will, verse number 24, the Bible says that Apollos was an eloquent man. What does this mean? Well, I think it means that he was a good speaker. He had eloquence with words. He was able to stand in front of a crowd, and I believe when he would speak, he would command their attention. They would be drawn into what he had to say. Uh, he had a knowledge about the Scripture. The Bible says that uh, here he was mighty in the Scriptures. Verse number uh, 24, uh, eloquent man, he was mighty in the Scripture. That would be a good quality to have, and maybe... Of you as a Christian, uh, not maybe you're not going to be eloquent as a speaker. Uh, boy, I sure don't feel like I am in any way. And sometimes when I get to think about it, I feel so sorry for you folks have to listen to me preach. But nonetheless, uh, we can have a quality of being exceptional in the Scriptures, knowing what the Bible says. That'd be a good quality to have. 
Uh, he was educated about spiritual things. The Bible says that he was instructed in the way of the Lord. And so he wasn't just a smart man in life. And obviously we have, you know, just because someone is um, smart or educated doesn't mean they're educated in the way of the Lord. There are many people that are educated. They don't have a clue about the way of God. And so he was educated about spiritual things. Another great quality. He was energetic. Verse number 25 says that he was fervent in the spirit. And I like that quality. He was fervent. What does that mean? He had a drive about him to get things done. He was energetic uh, in his spirit, the Bible says. And that's a great quality, especially we could learn as a young person tonight to have fervency in what you do. Oh, listen, there's a lot of apathy around today. There's a lot of people that just want to get by with as little work as they can. And like they say, many people work very hard to get out of work, don't they? And the truth is, if you just do the job, you'd be done and on to the next project. But anyway, Paulos was energetic. He had an excitement about him. And Paulos was also one that was teaching in the synagogue. And that was a great privilege to be able to to be a teacher and to teach there in the synagogue. The Bible says he began to speak boldly in the synagogue there in verse number 26. So of all these qualities that Apollos had, I believe there's one thing that, well, he needed to work on a little bit. And here's what it is. I think that at this moment in his life that Apollos had a limited knowledge of the things that well, he probably should have known more about. Now, notice what the Bible says in verse number 25. And this is an interesting phrase at the end of verse 25. He spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord. Now, what does the next part say? Knowing only the baptism of John. Now, that's a great thing to know, by the way. Uh, hey, listen, one of the most amazing things uh, to take place in Scripture and to usher in the ministry of the Lord was knowing about John and the baptism that, that of course, uh, as John baptized Christ. But, but it says, knowing only the baptism of John. Um, and as he was teaching, there were some people that heard that. And I want to get ahead of myself. But uh, this is talking about John the Baptist. So of course, we know who John the Baptist was, the one that Jesus handpicked to be the forerunner of Christ, to, uh, to go ahead of him and say, hey, there's somebody coming after me that's greater than I am. He said, I'm not even worthy to loose his shoes. He was the forerunner for the Messiah, the one that Jesus described. Here's what Jesus said of John the Baptist, that he was the greatest man born of a woman. Man, that's a pretty high mark to have on you. Jesus would say that. And, you know, as, I don't know, as Apollos was, I believe, confronted here by Aquila and Priscilla, and we'll get to that in a moment, they wanted to, to help him, I think, of, the, of his understanding, he could have gotten defensive. He really could have. He could have gotten a chip on his shoulder, and he could have bristled up, and he could have said, you know what, uh, I don't believe that you have anything to tell me that I don't know already. I think he could have gotten the wrong spirit, but Apollos had a teachable spirit. Notice um, what happened here. And uh, God had sent him somebody that was going to help him out tremendously in his life. This trait of having a teachable spirit. Now, these other things we mentioned about him were very good. Eloquent as a speaker, knew the scriptures. Uh, he was educated about spiritual things. He was energetic, and he was able to teach in the synagogue. Those are pretty great things. But perhaps no other quality would be greater than the quality of having a teachable spirit. A teachable spirit. God sent him some teachers. Notice the Bible says, as he was speaking in the synagogue, in verse 26, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard. So they're sitting there, and it just you can understand what took place in your mind. They're sitting there hearing Apollos teach, and as they hear him, they realize 
Yes, this guy has some important things to say, but it appears that he's limited in his knowledge of the things that probably would be very helpful in his ministry, things about the Lord. And the Bible says, they took him unto them, and here's what they did. They expounded unto him, or they taught him the way of God more perfectly. They began to help him understand some more things about the ministry that Christ had and some things that would be helpful to him if he was going to be a preacher of the gospel. This was a great couple. Uh, you, you might say this was a dynamic couple that had a heart for God. Uh, they were a husband and team that served the Lord, and I like that, a, a family serving God together. It's great to serve God as an individual, but when you can serve God as a family, that's a wonderful thing. The Bible speaks of Aquila and Priscilla in 1 Corinthians 16, 19. The churches of Asia salute you. Aquila and Priscilla salute you much in the Lord with the church that is in their house. You understand Aquila and Priscilla were servants of God. They really were. And they knew the things of the Lord. They had a church there in their house, and uh, they were obviously well known as the writings of Paul uh, referenced Aquila and Priscilla. So we see that the impression of Apollos uh, from Aquila and Priscilla, the Bible says, whom when they heard. So obviously they were sitting there and they heard him teaching and their mind had this impression of who he was. And, you know, that's just uh, the way that it is. When we hear somebody for the first time, a lot of times an impression is formed in our mind. Whether it's true or not, it appears that way. And I think it's important that, uh, that we keep that in mind. You know, sometimes perception is reality uh, because if somebody perceives the way it is, well, until their mind is changed, that's just the way it is because they perceived it. Whether or not it's true or not, uh, it's kind of beside the point. But we don't know what they heard. The Bible doesn't tell us what Apollos was preaching that day. But we do know whatever they heard that brought them to an understanding, or at least in their mind, that this guy has a limited knowledge. Uh, yes, he knows some very good things, but, oh, we could teach him many more things. So, uh, you know, really, we don't know what he was preaching, and I don't think it would probably do us well to speculate what he was preaching, because it doesn't really matter. But it was evident that his preaching just wasn't up to speed with the New Testament church and that era that was taking Place as Christ started the church, and of course here in Acts, this is the pattern for the New Testament church as a church was started back then. But here's what they did. They took Apollo in, and they began to invest in Apollo. The Bible says, verse 26, that they took him unto them. And I'm so glad, and I guarantee you, Apollos would say the same thing. I'm thankful to have had these two folks in my life that loved me enough to pull me aside as a young preacher and say, would you mind if we would take you in and help teach you a few things? Could we just uh, set up some weekly uh, sessions perhaps and have some Bible studies together or do this or that? Uh, obviously, they didn't have uh, Bible studies. Much of the Bible wasn't written at that time. But, but they began to teach him the things that would help him so much in his life. And here it is. They had enough love and compassion for Apollos to invest in his training. And here's what they did. The Bible says that they expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. More perfectly uh, means, you know, kind of the, the whole picture, the whole story, if you will, uh, the updated and current happenings of the church. Now, we look uh, here at our Bible and we read the letters. These things took place at Ephesus. These things took place at Philippi, on and on. Well, they, they had to probably by word of mouth begin to tell him, hey, Apollos, can I tell you about the church over here? This would be helpful uh, for you to know. Can I tell you about things that were happening over at this place? And they began to teach him and update him probably with things that were very important in the history of the early church. So uh, <clears throat> this is an important attribute to have a teachable spirit. And so the title of the message, The Treasure of a Teachable Spirit, uh, spirit. Why is a teachable spirit a treasure? Well, there's some several things about it. Uh, four, uh, to be exact, that I want to give to you tonight that'll be a helpful for us. Now, um, 
A person that is unteachable is just about worthless. Just about worthless because you're not going to tell them anything. As a young person, as a teenager, we've got teenagers in here tonight. Keep, I beg you, keep a teachable spirit. I want to reference a saying that I have, I think I said last Sunday night. But I saw the sign in my barber shop as a kid, and I never forgot it. It said, us old folk know more about being young than you young folk do about being old. And that's just the truth. That's just the bottom line. No, us old people might not have it all figured out and all together. But one thing is true. We've been down the road a lot farther than you have, and I guarantee you can teach you some things that will help you in life if you would listen. And the honest truth is that teachable spirit ought to stay with us, not just as a teenager, but as we go through our adult life. Always learning, always trying to grow in whatever area it is. So here's why a teachable spirit is a treasure. First of all, it portrays a humility. It portrays a humility. You know, we learn so much about humility from the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says he came and he humbled himself. He took upon the form of a servant. Humility is a great quality. And when I would have a teachable spirit, it's, it's telling uh, the other person, whoever it might be, I have a humble spirit. I don't know it all. I, I'm willing to learn. That's a treasure. Humility is a treasure. Now, here's what insecurity compounds. Now, uh, there's many folks that think they know it all and they act like they know it all. You know why? They're actually insecure on the inside. I've met people like that in life, and, and you want to try to, you generally want to try to help them about whatever it is. It might be things of the Bible. It might be things that are practical with living. And when you start to talk to them, Brother Kevin, I mean, they've already got the answers. They know how to do it. But the proof isn't there because they've been failing. And the truth about it is sometimes when people are insecure, they act like they know it all, and all that really does is it compounds the ignorance that they really have. It's so important to be humble. We have several quotes that I want to share tonight, and uh, not necessarily from religious people, but, but these are good quotes. The only true wisdom is in knowing you know nothing. That comes from Socrates. The only true wisdom is knowing you know nothing. That portrays a humility about you. Pride causes many people to miss valuable truths that could help them in their life. I mean, listen, uh, it's amazing how people just won't learn. They make the same mistakes over, over, and over. You know how much humility it would take for someone like Apollos to admit that, well, he didn't know everything? He was a pretty well-known guy. He, he was able to teach in the synagogue. I mean, he knew some of the big names. And for someone to come up and say, Hey, Apollos, can I teach you something? I wonder in our today's circle sometimes, you know, what we might call preachers with big names, if we were to approach them and say, Hey, could I ask you a question? Could I uh, maybe not challenge you, but, but I see things different about this. So can we talk about this? I don't necessarily want to debate with people. I, I don't like debates. Usually debates, there's nothing good that comes from it. Uh, it's two people trying to prove their point, and it just doesn't end well usually. But if someone wants to genuinely have a discussion, well, then that's a different story. Sometimes I wonder, is there humility with uh, people today and preachers that are well-known? I hope there is. I hope there is. But surely for Apollos, we have to understand, he, he was humble. To accept uh, this instruction from a godly couple that wanted to take him in. Uh, think about this. Preconceived ideas are the enemy of knowledge. We have a preconceived idea of this is the way it is, this is how this works, or this is the truth about a matter, and that keeps me from learning. Now, listen, if you learn something, you know it to be true. In fact, then go ahead and make your mind up about it, and that's okay. But listen, uh, the attitude of being uh, humble will help you so much. Uh, here's another quote. Before, uh, people learn something every day, and a lot of times it's what they learned the day before was wrong. You understand that? We, we learn something every day. Many times it's, oh, okay, what I thought I knew yesterday I really didn't know. I just learned it the hard way today. 
And the truth is, <laughs> when we have an unwillingness to change, most of the time it's because of pride. We just don't want to be told what to do. <clears throat> Robert Heinlein said this, and I quote, I never learned from a man who agreed with me. You're not going to learn from people that you, are, you agree with. Uh, challenge yourself. Learn. Grow. It takes a humility to do that. The Pharisees would mock anyone that said something they didn't believe or agree with. We can find an example of that in Luke, Luke 16. I mean, listen, they just didn't want to learn. The Pharisees also, who were covetous, heard these things, and they derided him. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. The law and the prophets were until John. Since that time the kingdom of God is preached, and every man presseth into it. And it is easier for heaven and earth to pass than one tittle of the law to fail. Uh, they didn't have any desire to learn, not at all. I'm just saying that, first of all, if you have a teachable spirit, it's a valuable treasure of humility and not to know it all. Uh, second of all, another treasure that you can possess by being teachable is the hunger for knowledge, a hunger for knowledge. You see, when a person is hungrier for truth than for recognition, then they can learn. Um. The education of a man is never finished until he dies. Learning till the day we die. Robert E. Lee made that quote. Uh, what, are we, what are we saying here? As a Christian, we ought to always have a desire to know God better. Have a desire. I, I love 2 Timothy 2.15. The older I get, the more I like this verse. Study to show thyself approved unto God. I don't study the scriptures. Well, I do in a way because I, I have an avenue to preach and teach. But I ought to study the scriptures because that's what's acceptable to him. He wrote this book for me to know and understand. It helps me in my life. Many times if you don't have an avenue to, well, teach what you've learned, <coughs> excuse me, then there's not a lot of motivation to learn. I saw Darren drink this. Now I'm going to have to drink after him. <coughs> a little bit of a dry throat here. But we're not motivated to learn sometimes. We don't have a way to teach it to somebody. You're missing the point. We're to learn because it's acceptable to him. It shows him how much I love him and his word. Have a hunger to know God's word. What do you hunger for? Well, there's things in my life that I hunger for. Uh, there, there are things that, uh, that motivate me and drive me. <clears throat> I ought to have a motivation to know God's word. Young people, what do you hunger for every day? Uh, Dawson, what are you hungry for during a day? What makes you excited to get up in the morning? Is it school? No, not school. I bet I know what some things are. <clears throat> uh, boys, girls, what, what makes you want to get up and, and if you could just do whatever you wanted to in a day, what would excite you? We've got to get to a place where the Word of God is exciting to us. I'm not saying you have to spend two and three hours a day studying it, but you ought to desire to get a gold nugget out of Scripture every day. Read something. Have a hunger. Hey, listen, if you want to be teachable, you're going to have to have a hunger for truth. The Bible is clear in Proverbs that a sign of wisdom is, is having the right attitude toward learning and knowledge. The reason why many people will never reach that place of being wise, well, they just don't have a hunger for it, no desire. And what's Proverbs say? Proverbs chapter 1, the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity, to give subtlety to the simple to the young man, knowledge and discretion. And here it is in verse 5. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. If you want to be a smart person, you'll have a hunger for truth and knowledge. Now, I think it's important to point out, just because Apollos didn't know perhaps everything that he should have known, didn't mean that he was stupid. Hey, listen, just because I don't know something, that doesn't mean I'm stupid. 
I like using that word. It just kind of sounds ugly. But hey, listen, doesn't mean we don't know anything. What did Apollo, what was said of Apollos? Uh, notice in verse 24 again that he was mighty in the scriptures. He knew some things. Hey, he wasn't a, he wasn't a stupid guy, if you will. So there's nothing wrong with, with admitting that I don't know it all and I've got a hunger to learn more about the things of God. Many people fear the truth because it jeopardizes what they know. Let me say that again. Many people fear the truth because it jeopardizes what they know. We think we've got things figured out, and sometimes we just don't want to change. Why? Because that's not comfortable. I'm comfortable knowing what I know in the Word of God and whatever we could pull a million things out of the hat, I guess, but I'm comfortable in that. You know, sometimes the preacher, I, I, I'm challenged by things. And there's sometimes I have to change because I didn't realize my understanding of Scripture was not correct. And I have to back up and say, wait a minute, I've learned something this week. And even practically speaking, uh, I'll learn something from someone and I'll say, you know what? I always thought this was the best way to do it, but I just learned something this week. It's not. And uh, even at the house, you know, we're, as a family, we're constantly learning and growing. And, and let's not have an attitude of, of pride where we don't want to learn and grow. Uh, you have to have a hunger for it. Number three, <clears throat> having an attitude to learn, desire to learn, uh, to learn will produce honor. Will, will produce honor. <clears throat> the Bible says here in verse number twenty. Six that Aquila and Priscilla took him in and taught him. And then the Bible says in verse 27, when he was disposed to pass into Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to what? To receive him. Who, when he was come, helped them much which had believed through grace. You see, uh, we, uh, just he got to a place where now I've learned. And now it's time for me to move on. The Bible says he was going to Achaia. And uh, they sent a letter ahead and told the disciples he was coming. And when he comes, you receive him. This is a man of God that can help you. This is someone that can teach you some things that you need to know. This was a position of honor. You know, when we'll stay humble, when we'll have that teachable spirit, well, the treasure is humility. That's a great treasure. Another treasure is the hunger that we'll have as a person. And then another treasure is it'll produce honor. The Lord can use you. He can use you to then help other people. Uh, what happened in the life of Apollos was because he was willing to learn and grow, then the church was able to recommend him. I often think, well, not often, but, but as I read this story, I think, what if he hadn't have had a teachable spirit? Perhaps he would have never got that letter of recommendation. And his ministry would have been stifled. His opportunity to reach people would have been, well, kind of cut short. And he received a great honor of that letter of recommendation because he had the character to learn. Many people want to be used. Some folks want to be used in ministry. But a lot of people just aren't teachable. You can't teach them. They know it all. God wants people to op uh, uh, many people want God to open doors uh, for them, but yet they don't, you know, have an open door in their mind. They're closed minded. Hey, listen, you have the hunger, you have the humility. In time, honor can definitely come, and we see that from Apollos as he was recommended to the church. And then, of course, uh, the Bible says he helped them much, which had believed through grace. When you will have a teachable spirit, you'll have that humility, you have a hunger to learn, it'll take you to a place of honor where then you can begin to help other people. You see what happened because Apollos had a teachable spirit was this. Many others got help. Why? Because Apollos got help. Young people, can I tell you, you learn this as a 10, 11, 12-year-old boy. Then as you get into your teenage years, Girls, same thing. You can begin to influence the younger generation. Why? Because you got it. You learned it. You didn't say, I know it all. Uh, it's frustrating to have to teach 20-year-olds what they should have learned as a 10-year-old. 
Very frustrating. Why? Well, they should have got it. The 20-year-old should be the one helping the 10-year-old. That example. And Apollos had a great attitude, and then he was, able to, he was able to help others. He went to this place called Achaia, and he was able to help Christians there, and God allowed him to help these believers. Uh, because he allowed his beliefs to be reinforced, he was used of God to reinforce the faith, faith of others. May I say this in the ministry, in the churches, there's just no room for know-it-alls. No room for know-it-alls. I've not met anybody that actually knew it all. Oh, I've met some pretty smart people, but nobody knows it all. So what am I saying tonight? Just a simple lesson. Have a teachable spirit. Be an Apollo. Uh, say, you know what? Uh, yeah, there's some things that I know, and I can limit myself, and that's all that I can teach. Or I can just step back, swallow my pride, and say, you know what? Let me learn some more. Hey, develop a hunger for that. And then God can use you. Uh, so what he's saying, having a teachable spirit is a priceless treasure. A priceless treasure. Teachable spirit. I want to say this in closing. <clears throat> and this is just kind of a, a piggyback off this morning. But I think it would be good to fit in here at this time. And um, mothers, as, as they teach their children, we talked about that this morning and how God used Bathsheba. In a great way to teach Solomon, uh, the king there. And um, I wanted to say this tonight, and my wife and I were talking this afternoon, that you may have failed as a mother in your own eyes. And I'm not at all casting judgment on anybody, but you may feel in your own eyes that I have failed as a mother. Obviously, in a lot of folks' eyes, Bathsheba failed I mean, she, she obviously uh, didn't get started on the right foot at all. But you know, through her failures, something greater that could ever come because of who she was is in who she raised. Who she raised. You may have been a failure in the world's eyes, in your own eyes. Hey, but we can influence the next generation. We can raise up a generation. Uh, be an influence to someone else. And here's the truth of what happened. Bathsheba, the adulter, adulteress, raised, God used her to raise the wisest man in all the world. That's just the truth of what happened. And so uh, stay excited as a mama. Amen. And uh, as a person that needs to learn, stay excited, remain teachable. Never stop learning. Never stop learning until the day you die. I am so encouraged when I hear <clears throat> of a elderly saint of God that will say, Preacher, I read through my Bible this year. Preacher, let me tell you what I learned in Scripture. I mean 70, 80 years old. You know what that's telling me? We're still trying to learn. Still trying to find something in there. Why? I'm not a know-it-all. Been saved for 50, 60 years. Been going to church all my life. But there's still room to learn. And especially to the young people tonight, keep a teachable, teachable spirit. Let's pray tonight. Father, thank you for... This time together, Lord, my heart's been just been full all day long. <clears throat> Lord, as we think about the grace of God this morning, as we talked about how you have used this, this lady, Bathsheba, Lord, you can use anybody. And then tonight, Lord, I'm again reminded of your grace. <clears throat> Lord, that you would want to allow me to be someone that could teach and to preach and help others. Lord, that's a humbling thing. Lord, I pray you should help us all in our Christian life always be learning. And Lord, I pray that you'd help the young people tonight. Lord, drive something deep in their heart tonight that would cause them to not have pride, that would cause them to have a hunger for knowledge. Learn that from their teachers, from their parents, from their preacher. That they would realize that they'll come out a lot farther ahead if they'll just do that. Oh, there might be something else that you spoke to a heart tonight that I didn't even touch on. Lord, whatever that was, I pray that you would help folks to respond now, make a decision in their heart, or to do business with you during our invitation time. In Christ's name I pray, amen. Let's all stand to our feet as we close out the service. Piano plays a song of invitation. Let's spend a moment with the Lord tonight. Use an altar if you need to. It's a great place to meet with the Lord. Have that teachable spirit.